on question 52 through 54, solve each linear inequality. Graph your solution or solutions on a number line. First, let's talk about the linear part of this. So as you probably recall, the word linear often implies a couple of different things. One of them is the graph of that thing is a line, but not in this case. It's the other implication with linear, which is that the highest power of each one of these variables is, eh, 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 it's one. Okay, now let's talk about solving inequalities, how they compare to solving equations. First, they, they pretty much solve the same way. There's a couple of exceptions. So inequalities, which is not how you spell that, equality, inequality solves like an equation, but there's some exceptions and let's talk about those. The first thing is that you have to deal with flipping the sign when you multiply or divide by a negative number. So number one, multiply, divide by negatives. And what does that do? That flips the inequality. And let's talk about like why that happens here. Let's, let's do this with some numbers. I'm going to start with, let's say, 0 is less than 1, which I, I think you can agree with, right? Now, one of the things that you can do according to this multiplication property, is that you can multiply both sides of this by whatever number that you want, 5, 15, 12, pi, whatever. Let's go ahead and multiply it, both sides, by negative 1. And when I multiply both sides of this thing by negative 1, I get, well, negative 1 times 0, uh, it's still 0. And then if I bring down this inequality sign, we're about to see what's about to happen. Negative 1 times that 1 makes this a negative 1. And no longer is this inequality true. This one was, this one's not. So to fix this situation, which will always happen, we're going to flip over this inequality sign. So now that zero is greater than negative one, and now it's true. Okay, so there's the first big difference. Now, the second one is that it, it's having to do with the number of solutions. You often get more than one solution. Sure, when you're solving a linear equation, there is a special case where you have an infinite number of solutions. Eh, I'm not talking about that. That rarely, rarely happens. What we're talking about is the difference between these two things. Let's say I have x is equal to 5. If you were to put this thing on a number line, all you get is a dot. Here's 0, here's 5. You get a big fat dot right there at 5. That's an equation. Linear equation, anyway. And then if you have, let's say, x is greater than 5, I am going to, hey, actually, let's make this greater than or equal to, so I can just kind of swap, swipe, yes, swipe this graph. Here. And now, instead of it just having a dot at 5, it's, well, it's everything that is either equal to 5 or bigger than 5, which means it's going to go off to the right. This has only one solution. This has infinitely many solutions because 5 satisfies this inequality. 5 is greater than or equal to 5. Specifically, it's equal to 5. But I can pick something else over here, like 7. 7 is greater than or equal to 5. Specifically, it's bigger than 5. Right? Okay, so big difference in terms of the number of solutions here. Okay, and then the next big difference is having compound inequalities. Inequalities. All right. And what I mean by that is if I go back up here to these problems, number 53 and 54 are compound inequalities. The word compound in this sense is used in the same way that compound sentences uses it. Compound sentences you put together two or more sentences and you join them up with what you guys call in English class fanboys, 
like uh what are those four and nor whatever the fanboys are standing for for in math we have two of them only two we have ands which is what number 53 is and we have ors which is what number 54 is and that's easy to see because it has the word or in it the word and does not appear in number 53 it's kind of hidden so let me show you both of those so compound inequalities the first one are and inequalities and I'll give you an example here. Like, for example, if I have 1 is less than x, which is less than 5. And uh, actually, what I'm seeing are two inequalities that are crammed together with, like I said, this uh, conjunction, what they're called, this conjunction here that is hidden in this case. So the first inequality that is in here, that's easy to see, is three. 1 is less than x. Eh, but we usually write that the other way. x is greater than 1, right? I just want to make sure my alligator mouth is, you know, eating the same exact number on that one. Okay. Uh, and then the second one that is implied by this compound inequality is x is less than 5 x is less than 5. And both of these things have to be true. And we separate these things usually with the conjunction and. So now let me put these things on a number line and see what they look like. So I'll put a zero for reference, the number one, and the number five. Okay, we'll start with this green one here. I'm going to put an open circle around the uh, the one, remember you get an open circle when it's just the less than or the greater than sign, no equal sign underneath it. And then you're going to get a colored in dot whenever you do have the equal sign. Okay, next it says that x is, has to be bigger than one. Well, bigger than one means towards the right, like five is bigger than one, so it has to be part of that solution set. So I'm going to shade off to the right. Okay, and then we have x is less than 5. So I'm going to put an open circle around 5. Less than, that's going to be to the left because anything towards the left is smaller than 5. And you can see that, well, it looks like the whole entire number line is, is colored in, is shaded in. It doesn't mean that everything is the solution because I want both of these things to be true. I want my number to be bigger than 1 and at the same time, smaller than five. Well, the part that fits that description is the part that is right here in the middle, in between one and five. And it's pretty easy to see that within this inequality, this compound inequality, one being the smaller number, five being the bigger number, and x is something that is in between those two. So this is what and inequalities is always going to look like. It sort of looks like a geometric segment. And these endpoints here can either have open circles or they can be colored in. And that's exactly what's going to happen over here on question number 53. Now 53 looks a little bit more complicated than the one we were just looking at because you have this sort of linear expression that's right here in the middle. And when you have that, well, here, let's, let me uh, clean this up just a little bit and get rid of that word. And then I'm actually going to use, where the heck is the tape? I think it's in, here we go. Let's say that I covered this part up like this. And then you would have this linear inequality. And the first thing that you would probably do is that you would subtract one from both sides, right? Okay, let me get rid of this tape and then cover up this part. Let's say that this is what I had. Well, if I were going to solve that linear inequality, the first thing that I would do is also subtract one from both sides. So sort of like that. But what we have is these things crammed together. And so what you usually do is you subtract one everywhere. You're going to subtract it in the middle, subtract it from the left, and also subtract it from the right. Let me get rid of that piece of tape. Okay. Next up, we have our or inequalities, like number 54. So, or inequalities, I don't look like the and ones. And this one is, you know, like I said, it has the word or always within the problem. I'm going to make this one x is less than 1 or x is greater than 5. 
So as far as an answer goes, all I want is any kind of number that satisfies either one of these two parts. Not both of them at the same time, because that's not possible. Just either one of those two parts. Easiest way to look at this is just put them on a number line like we did with the and one. Okay, so I'll put a zero here, a one, and a five someplace over here. And then take these things individually. Let's say x is less than one. Open circle around the one. Less than means that I'm going to go off to the left over here. And then uh, let's do the same thing over here with x is greater than five. It has an open circle around the five. Bigger than five means shading off towards the right. Okay. So notice that this is, this is basically in the opposite direction as the AND segment inequality. These are two rays that point in opposite directions here. As far as an answer goes, I can choose anything that's in the colored part. So for example, x could be equal to zero. That satisfies this inequality because it basically satisfies this left-hand piece that's over here. It is also acceptable to have something like x is equal to 10, because x is equal to 10 is over here on the right-hand side, and it's within the blue part, the second part of that or inequality. All right, so whenever you're solving these, it's very straightforward. It's almost like just two problems in one. You solve this one, get yourself an answer for that one, and then you solve this one separately from the first one, and after you graph them on a number line, you are pretty much 